Hi, I'm Soraya El Portillo, and today I want to tell you my story as an entrepreneur. I studied psychology because it was recommended to me. When you are a child, an adolescent, your mentor, teacher, and parents have a great influence on the decisions you make. I then help you define yourself as a person. I was repeatedly told that I was a girl who would do well in the field of humanities, and that a degree of this type would fit best with my abilities. I was compared to my two brothers, who have much higher IQs than mine, and people comment that they would be better suited studying more technological and complex degrees. We must be careful with these uh, types of behaviors, as they can produce the so-called effect or Pygmalion effect, which is the result produced in children when their role models, like parents or teachers, for example, continually tell them that they believe them to be. If a child is continually told that he or she is dumb, they will believe they are dumb and they will end up assuming the role of a fool. If you repeatedly tell them they are clumsy, they will end up acting clumsily. However, there is also another side of the Pygmalion effect. Just yes, as it can create limiting beliefs, it can also create empowering beliefs. Adults can empower a child to become inquisitive, consistent, sociable, fostering exploration, and ultimately helping them, them to become an adult with an inquiring mind. If you let a child touch, investigate, explore, take things apart and put them together, they will wonder why things are the way they are. That child, when older, will have a desire to learn, sadly. Nowadays, although less frequently, we still continue to hear, don't touch that, don't break that, don't take that apart. In the same way that we hear parents and teachers counsel girls towards degrees in humanities. Following these beliefs, I managed to make my way in the world of psychology and I specialize in training professionals and executives in soft skills. On the 8th of March in 2006, International Women's Day, I founded my human resources consulting firm, focusing all my efforts on doing the best that I could and helping my clients to improve their value by providing them with tremendously creative and efficient solutions. Then, in 2015, I decided to step outside in comfort zone and fill a gap that I could see in the courses and public speaking training session that my firm offered. Around the world, the most important human resources companies suffer from fundamental gaps when it comes to implementing their training services in public speaking. The first is the inability for the student to get enough practice in present basis training. This is due to the lack of time during the course, which limits the possibility of providing enough training to greatly improve skills. In most courses, each student typically has the opportunity to practice a pitch to or three times during the training workshop. This is not enough to improve one's skills. Furthermore, these presentations are conducted in a controlled environment, the classroom, where the student is in their comfort zone. With classroom training, the student or professional can't practice their speeches in front of clients, management committees, or large audiences. In order to achieve a substantial improvement in the student's ability to communicate, we thought that new technologies such as virtual reality 
will give the professional the opportunity to practice in real settings as many times I need it. So we started to develop Kiara, a virtual reality simulator capable of allowing the student to confront different situations as often as they wish and to feel the immersed in experience which are as real as life itself. We recorded 24 different virtual reality scenes so that students are able to practice and practice until they achieve a significant improvement. For us, this innovation, which improved the, how things were done, was not enough. We understood that for the professional to improve, they must be accompanied by someone who corrects them, gives them feedbacks, accompanies them and helps them to improve. This coach must be the best. That is why I developed an artificial intelligence algorithm based on measuring fundamental aspects of public speaking, such as intonation, speed, rhythm, tad words, pronunciation, clarity, positivity, and even eye contact. All of these KPIs measured objectively allow us to attain the feedback we give our students to offer them the best advice, a most adequate and personalized recommendation so that they can improve their public speaking skills. That's how Kiara was born, the only virtual reality simulator that provides the student with unlimited practice, objective, action plans and advice so that their public speaking skill improves thanks to constant practice. Chiara is a project that proposes a big challenge. First of all, due to the large technological component that I have to face without any previous technological training. And second of all, due to the lack of confidence in the feasibility of the idea. Both professionally and personally, the measures I received for a year and a half were that the idea, the innovation it I was proposing was not feasible. As of today, the data support us. We are present in 70 countries. We have developed the simulator in four languages and we were able to break even in less than 12 months. And most importantly, the students who pass through Chiara improve their skills by 20%. We have easily exceeded the goals we set for ourselves when we embarked in this adventure. We are doing things differently and achieving better results than those achieved by doing things conventionally. Entrepreneurship isn't easy, and it hasn't been easy. However, the challenges become the magic created when you finally achieve your goals, and you feel so proud of what you have been able to do. In my opinion, there are three fundamental aspects that can increase the likelihood of your project being successful. The first is passion. Have purpose and believe that what you are doing has a purpose. It is very important that you don't think of technology as an end but as a means. We mustn't use technology, virtual reality or mixed reality only because it is popular. It's important to clarify now the, the objective, no the objective, the purpose, the added value you want to provide to the business or the client. And from this point, analyze what types of technology will help you to achieve your goals. 
There are many ways to digitalize a uh, business uh, from big data, artificial intelligence, natural language processing, IoT, etc. Not only virtual reality. The second aspect, which is completely necessary, is persistence. Don't throw in the towel. The journey of the entrepreneur is like a roller coaster in which there are continual ups and downs, economical, te technological and emotional difficulties. And overcoming these difficulties will determine whether or not you succeed. You only fail once you quit. If you continue to fight and look for solution, no one can tell you you have failed. I remember the 16 months it took from the time I came up with the idea to develop a virtual reality simulator in July of 2015 until I was able to find a team and the technology in November of 2016 has been the worst 16 months. It was a time in which I considered throwing in the towel and continuing with my conventional business, which have been giving me good results. My advice in this sense is that if you have the possibility, set out with partners that complement you, no one can be good at everything. And when starting a new business, there are parts that excite us more and to which we can contribute the most. You can be good at management or on the technical side or in sales or strategy. Look for someone with whom you can form the best team. And when you, your motivation falters, your partner will encourage you. The third aspect is an inquiry in mind. The decide to continually learn. As I said earlier, I didn't have any technological experience. If this is your case, it doesn't have to be the final word. That's why you must investigate about how to achieve the added value you want to provide. Research, study, investigate. Now more than ever, we can find all the information we need on the internet. Look for someone who is doing similar things, learn from them and improve, and above all, even thought what I say may scare you, share your idea. But I assure you, the idea is not the most important part of your, of your business. It is much more important to develop it, believe in it, and improve it. If you share your idea, you can get people's opinion, and this will allow your idea to improve, to evolve and take shape. If on top of that you can test your prototype with the final user, you can receive first-hand reviews from the client about what they need, what they think of your solution, what your idea is lacking, and you'll be able to get on the market more quickly and with a more suitable product. I firmly believe that the formula for being successful when it comes to setting out on a new venture doesn't require ingredients that you don't have. I don't promise it will be easy, but if I can give you a piece of advice, I will tell you it has to do with attitude, the attitude you have in the face of challenge, difficulties and life. Nowadays, with effort and constant learning, we can build businesses that allow us to become successful entrepreneurs, while at the same time bringing values and value to society. Don't stop trying. Take it from a non tech savvy woman who one day believed she could start up
a technological business despite having two brothers with higher IQs than hers and who had been told that technology wasn't for her. The key is to be an entrepreneur with passion and a bubble purpose. Thank you all. Hope you enjoyed this talk. Have a nice day.